Hey everybody, how we doing today? So, it's hurricane time again. Fortunately, not for us directly. All right, there's one out in the west there. So it's causing a whirly whirls and then we're catching the uh, edge of it. So we're blowing 30s, 35s. So although I am in my windy day fishing mode, and eh, that's a little bit beyond my uh, borders there. So I'm taking a pass. So I figured it'd be a good day to do a number two of my series called starting a YouTube business. Now the starting a YouTube business playlist that I've created is going to be kind of geared towards helping those people that have a YouTube fishing channel understand the true value of what they've got regardless of your size beyond the one tenth of one cent per every view that you get in real life, real life basically. And so you can kind of take a look and just say, oh, there are other options that will make my YouTube channel financially viable and uh, maybe open your eyes to a lot of opportunities that are out there regardless of the size level of your YouTube channel. Okay, let's start off by talking a little bit about the value side of it, um, the value of your YouTube channel. Now I spoke to kind of being able to predict your monthly income from Google AdSense by just calculating out your monthly views by one tenth to one fifteenth of one penny, okay, for every view that you get on your channel as a kind of a rough estimate, okay, and that's really what you're looking at. And no, it's not that much, okay? And on top of that, it's not gonna get any better, okay? It's most likely gonna get worse, okay? If you look in the history, you'll see that it's basically a trend like this, okay? With a bigger drop during our last year's Admageddon where they had all those issues. Basically, it's supply and demand, okay? YouTube is a hot platform. They're getting unlimited amounts of new channels, new videos for all those channels, and they have a resource that is just growing that they could add their ads to without a problem, okay? So what that means is they can just pay less and it's no big deal what's gonna happen. People are gonna just drop off. No, it's a free platform. They're making some money on it. They just suck it up. I haven't really seen anybody that just said, oh, I'm not making enough money. I'm going somewhere else. It just doesn't happen that way. There is no other option. So people stay. So you Google slash YouTube pays less. All right. But on the flip side, okay, and that's kind of what this video is about, is to help people to understand that you have more options beyond just that AdSense that are really respectable if you choose to follow them. Now, part of that valuation, I think, comes to understanding that true value that your channel has and i'm gearing this more towards those up and coming channels fishing channels that might not have a huge viewer or subscribers base yet okay versus those well established at 100 500 000 million subscriber uh huge uh viewer base all right a lot of people in that instance are gonna say, I can't compete, it wouldn't be worthwhile for me to even get involved with that. They're huge, of course they're gonna make all the money and I'm little and I'm not gonna be able to compete. But I'm gonna to try to explain how you're a lot closer in the playing field than you think of. And the way I'll explain that is kind of like a story I kind of figured out was, so let's say I have a high-end navigation unit, okay, that I'm ready to release to the public. Now, we're not talking fish finders, but we're talking high-end yacht, super ship type stuff, okay? Very high-end, very expensive type of gear. And I go to my marketing team and say, okay, we're ready to release it. Go get me some platforms that I can release this out to. So they go out and they bring a couple of companies, okay? So, okay, let's go talk to them. So we go to the first company and we say, okay, what can you offer us? And they said, we have a data list of a million people that we could let know about your new uh, navigation system. And say, oh, wow, that's pretty good. Okay, so let's go talk to the other person. Go over there and say, what do you have to offer? We have a list of 500 people that we can give you. Okay, and we just kind of like, hmm, we got a million, we got some person with 500. Who brought this person in? All right, well, okay, let's go talk about it. And then, fortunately, we have our social media person, and they come in and they say, well, hold on a second, let, let me go talk to these people. So we go back to the million people and we say, they, they ask, 
where did that list of a million people come from? And they said, well, what we do is that we have like contests and you give us our inf your information and we enter in a contest or we have giveaways or if you're ever at the grocery store and you have those people with clipboards and if you fill out the information, they'll give you a pizza cutter or you'll get that email and they'll say, oh, spin the wheel and you can win $5 off. Da -da -da. Okay, and we get all their information that way. So, okay, so let's go talk to the, the other person with 500 people list. So where does your list come from? And they say, well, we have a, a updated list of all the high-end yacht purchases made within the last 20 years. And from that, we took out the people from three years to 10 years ago, okay? Figuring that these people that have these high-end yachts tend to want to have the best of the best at all times. And we figure with technology, three years is about that right time where stuff starts changing and these people are gonna want the newest best that's on the market. And on the low side, 10 years is about the time if they haven't updated their systems yet, they're kind of in need just in general. So we have all their updated information in that time frame, and that's where our 500 people list come from. And it's like ding, 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 wow. Okay, million versus 500, but qualifications being this is a very tailored, very responsive, this is customer specific data list, all right? And that's where that equation comes from, that equilibrium comes from that I'm talking about. So you, let's say you have, oh, I'm just a, star, a small channel, I have 100 subscribers, but they're like my relatives, they're the, the, the people that I fish with, they're people that know me personally and understand that I, when I say something is good, it's good, and they're, they'll fall in line with whatever I say, versus somebody that just has a, a, a million random people and is just kind of shotgunning it out to whoever, whatever, all right? The end result is you might get a very equal amount in regards to selling and actually converting that into money, all right? So that's why you should never really discount small versus large because of that factor. Now, of course, if you have a 100 uh, subscriber base versus a million subscriber base, and that 100 is just random people that you got just like the million got random, then of course, equal apples and apples, that one million is definitely gonna overtake you. But that's why the importance of, I've always talked about this, is legitimately getting these subscribers and these viewers and for the future, how valuable that's gonna be rather than just looking at a number as being the only important thing. And finally, on the value side of it, okay, once you start growing a little bit, all of a sudden you're gonna hit a point where your email is gonna start receiving a bunch of little proposals from companies that are gonna start saying, hey, noticed your uh, fishing channel, we like it a lot. Uh, we're wondering if you'd be interested in, in uh, checking out one of our products. We'll send it to you for free and you just try it and give us kind of a review on your video. Or, hey, we've got this, we'll send it to you and if you sell them, uh, we'll pay you this much and so forth and so on. Okay, and all you're like, hmm, what's going on? Okay, that's that value I'm talking about. It's not just Google AdSense throwing money at you for your videos. It's gonna be other companies that are gonna start coming to you to say, hey, let's do a little partnership, all right? And that's kind of also why I hope to that you understand there's, there is a value to it, okay? And what they're looking for and they're buying from you, you having your YouTube channel is that relationship that you have with your viewers. That's really all, that's your product that you have the ability to send is that one-on-one -on -one communication, okay, that relationship, that trust, that people are willing to, to, to throw money at you for. And that's where you really need to start like understanding how much value that your channel, regardless of size, has when these other people see it, but you don't, okay? So anyways, that's just a kind of a hint. When you start seeing that, you're gonna start understanding, wow, all right, maybe I'm selling myself short here. Now, hopefully you understand that, hey, regardless of size of your YouTube fishing channel, there's value there, okay? And there's an opportunity to make some decent money on it. And that kind of relates to what this is about. In, in the lingo, it's, it's called passive, passive income, 
All right. It's basically generating income off of your YouTube videos that you're po- putting up and posting. Now that involves the Google AdSense because really you're adding um, some advertisements to your videos and you're generating income. So that's one way. Um, another way is like affiliate links like uh, Amazon. Uh, you list all the equipment that you use in your videos. You put a specialized link that you've uh, worked with Amazon has given you. And every time you sell one, you get a small percentage of it. Okay. There's also what they're starting to push now is where that it's a, a preset store for your YouTube channel where there's a company that will create a site, host the website for you. They'll put up all the uh, merchandise options. And then when the, you announce it on your video and then people go and buy something, they handle the manufacturing of it, the packaging of it, the charging the customer, the shipping, okay? And all you do is at the end of the month, you get a report and a paycheck. And you really just do nothing beyond just saying, hey, I've got a store, okay? Um, and to the point where you're at where like I'm doing it is where I actually create merchandise, uh, manufacture it, um, store it, create my own website, uh, manage orders, package orders, ship them, and then everything from start to finish to the full extreme of you can leverage your YouTube channel and actually uh, build a full-on uh, retail store, four walls and a roof, and uh, have your name on it. Okay, So there's just different varying degrees of what you can make outside of just YouTube and YouTube AdSense. So when should you start this business? Well, it kind of depends, okay, on a couple of things. One is what your expectations are. I mean, if you're just looking to make a couple of dollars, pay for your bait for the day and be super happy, that's one thing. I'd say start right away, okay? You have a 100 viewers, I think you could do fine. Uh, if your expectations are is I only want to do it if, if I can quit my day job. All right? Now I'd say, well, then you probably better be certain that you have a very solid, large uh, viewer base and then have all your uh, marketing and product parts and everything in place before you decide to jump that. All right. And the other factor is very important is how engaged are you? What kind of relationship do you have with your existing pool of viewers, all right? Uh, if you just have the roughly 100 views on your videos or 100 subscribers, but you're really engaged with them and they follow you and they watch your videos and you interact with them and you have a very an excellent relationship where these people want to help you out regardless of what you ask for, all right? That's great. I mean, you'll do really well with just that smaller base, all right? Versus like we talked about, you could have a million people, but they just want to see you catching or getting your head bit off by a shark. And that's the only reason why they're there. You're not going to get a very good response rate on that. So it, it really depends. And going back to, well, only a hundred, that's just nothing. Okay. Think of it this way. Go to uh, any restaurant. Okay. And talk to the owner and just say, Hey, if, uh, an extra hundred people walked into your restaurant every day, would that impact you very much? And they would like, you can give me a hundred people. <laughs> oh crap. Yeah. It's, it's huge. Uh, same for any store or four walled business. All right. A hundred is a lot. Okay. When you start delving into the YouTube part of it and the views and you start, ah, oh, a hundred is really nothing. Okay. But it depends, all right, the way that you look at it and that relationship that you have. A great example, okay, of something to start off with is these stickers. I mean, I would recommend this to every YouTube fishing channel to think about uh, creating your own kind of logo for your brand, your company, okay, and investing in a few stickers with that logo on it. Uh, you can get these for a buck or two, or if you buy them in volume, 50 cents, all right? Then uh, you sell them for $5. Uh, your costs are basically a stamp for 50 cents, an envelope for 10 cents, that. So you make three, $3.50 every time you sell one, okay? Now you're thinking like, oh, I don't know, but what you're selling is not a sticker, okay? Really what you're selling is or giving away for your viewers 
who are engaged and you have a great relationship with, it gives them a way to an opportunity to support your channel. Okay. Outside of the, uh, give me your money so I could uh, do stuff. All right. No, it's kind of a give and take. You've come up and designed a nice little sticker that represents you and you're going to give that to them. They're going to buy it from you and you're going to take that cash and the, the excess money made from that and uh, buy another camera or more fishing gear. Okay. Uh, one of these stickers pays for one of my videos. Okay. Each video I make costs basically around $3. Uh, which is the cost of gas to drive me from here to Geiger Key, um, and then the gas for my outboard motor, and then back again is roughly around $3. And uh, yeah, I sell a sticker that pays for one video of mine. Okay? On top of that, it's boom, you are a legitimate business once you have these and you sell these. Okay. You've got your own merchandise, you're selling it, okay? Not necessarily have to register with the federal government, but you could, okay? You're a legitimate business at that point. Two, you are now, okay, you have a brand, okay? You have a actual brand outside of your YouTube channel name. You now have a brand, a legitimate brand that you're going to have out there and you send these out to a few people and now you have somebody in California sporting your, your company or in New York or Florida or Key West. Okay. Boom. You have now a, a, a worldwide kind of opportunity to put your, uh, your, your company out there, your brand out there. Also what it's good for is if you are thinking about, Hmm, I'm wondering if maybe I could make this my daytime job and, and quit my job and go into this full bore, all right? But you're not sure what kind of reaction you'll get or if you could support it. Get some stickers, okay? Put it out there to your viewers and see what happens. If nobody buys them, then keep your day job. If you just start blowing these out, then you can start thinking, wow, what if I had some shirts or if I had some hats or I had other merchandise? how much income I could generate from my viewers, okay, that are looking to support me. That's a good opportunity there. And finally, you can kind of take a look at Google and AdSense and say, huh, one-tenth of one penny. <laughs> but uh, stickers, highly recommend. I'll kind of wrap things up with giving a few uh, YouTuber examples as then finally wrapping up with a kind of an overview of of my all about the bait company. Um, starting off with uh, Elias V Fishing, all right? He used to be based out of the New York area. I think he's now in, he's in North Carolina now. Uh, but he started off with a day job and his YouTube uh, fishing. And then what he was able to cut the ties with his day, day job was by coming up with his own uh, soft plastics and then adding his uh, own jig heads. And by showing how effective those baits are and how to use them and so forth and off of his relationship that he has with his customer base and, and that uh, trust that they've built between them, he sells so many that he was able to quit his day job and just go full on YouTube. And it's not like a hundred different items. He's just got a handful of uh, soft plastics that just sells a ton of them. Okay. And that makes more money than probably his YouTube channel does. Uh, second great example is uh, Dar Sizzle Offshore, Dar Sizzle, Darcy and uh, Brian. Uh, they're probably the highest tier that in the fishing industry or fishing YouTube channels in regards to that leveraging that passive income. Okay. Just take a look at their, go into one of their videos and go in their description and open it up and look at all their things that they've got going where they're all generating different types of income. Whether it's a bunch of corporate sponsorships from a bunch of different companies, got the Patreon, got their own store, She's, they sell their own from home uh, made merchandise, uh, just tons of different, all the different aspects that you can think of, they've got them. Okay, so that's probably, if you want a, what could I max out and what's available for me out there, just take a look at theirs. Uh, and another great one that's probably the most mature that's been out the longest is like uh, 30 miles out, okay? Uh, the couple have 
been uh, probably I think it's geared more towards sponsorship deals as supporting them uh, but they also do their brand deals and so forth but they're they're another great example of their niche kayak fishing okay they're in that Texas and then Florida panhandle and they travel around but it's specifically just the kayaking and uh, they leverage that little niche area there and do a very successful job at it so those are just some good examples that you can take a look at and see what the possibilities are. And finally, that brings us to all about the bait <laughs> and uh, the YouTube uh, QS Kayak Fishing channel. Now, I always knew the, the YouTube channel was going to be a part of it, but that was it. It was going to be just a part of it, part of the big picture. Um, I knew on that aspect that I was going to be focused on the fishing because that's all I really care about is me fishing. All right? I could, this, everything else is a distant second that I would easily cut cords with uh, if it was going to affect my fishing. And that's kind of how I, I knew I wanted to design my YouTube channel on is that it was very important that I kind of stuck to that. And that was the reasons why I didn't really go that route of being that cinematic style uh, fishing videos where it takes a week to edit a video. It's just I fish too much and I didn't want to focus on that. I wanted to fishing, focus on going out the next day. Uh, just as well, I wasn't interested in just being a YouTuber only. Um, I wasn't interested in playing that YouTube game of the clickbaiting and uh, setting my hair on fire and dancing in a thong in order to get views. It just, eh, it just wasn't what I was interested in. And it would fit it better with me focusing on the fishing in the big picture to come later. Now, I did know that I wanted to focus on some core things, uh, three actually. One would be the fishing, fishing and fishing, all right? Uh, two would be the keys related. Since there wasn't a lot of information about fishing the keys or the keys in general outside of the professional TV shows, and I saw that that was a great opportunity there. And third was uh, just the how-tos. Um, and more than just kind of, oh, I caught something. Let me tell you what I use. But explain the who's, the what, the why's, the where's, and the how's. Not only for the Florida Keys, but also in general. Because the benefit for that is, is that, yeah, I lose a lot of people that just want to see me reeling a fish. But for those people that want to know, how do you do that? And then finding out, oh, I show exactly how to do it. And they're like, wow, I can do that myself. And they go out and do it. Or like, you want to talk about loyal. That builds loyalty. And that will be like, when I go out, hey, you want to buy a sticker? They'll say like, dude, for the what I benefited from that, I'll buy five of those stickers. It's just, that's kind of how that turned out. And just as much as like the Florida Keys part of it, I've got people that are just like amazed that, oh, there's this, a YouTube channel about the Florida Keys right here. And then uh, the people that are reminiscing, I get so many of that, oh, I used to live there. Oh, I remember that. I remember that. And it, they just gravitate towards that. It just brings back all those pleasant memories. And then that value again for those people that are planning a vacation to see all the stuff that's available down here. And it's like, oh, God, this is tons of information of, about the Florida Keys. And then not to mention those people coming to fish the Florida Keys. All right. And again, it's just value making there. So those two by far make up a lot more than people that are just want to see me reel in a fish. They they get the entertainment value of it, but it's not that much value because as soon as they're disinterested, boom, they're on the next YouTube channel and they don't even think about me. But those people that are learning how to do something and they're going to implement those later, they've got me on their mind for a long period of time and they really do value it. So very important aspects there. Uh, but, uh, and it's been super successful. I mean, um, demographics wise, I would say I just turned, I just turned a hundred thousand subscribers. I'd say seven to 8,000 of those are my truly loyal, dedicated viewers. They're the ones that bread and butter support me a hundred percent. Um, they're the ones I connect with and they're, they're the ones that I just always can rely on. They're, they're your fishing buddies that know that's got your back. 
Then I've got another probably about 20, 25,000 that would fall under that keys category. And that's kind of cyclical. Um, November through March is going to be my peak times where I'm going to get a, a the mass of that 20,000 people will be focused on because that's when we get the most of our uh, our tourist base. But then we get year round tourism. So I'll still pick up a, a decent amount the year round. Um, and then uh, outside of that, the other 70,000, 75,000 is probably just looky lures. They're just the ones that want to just watch me reeling a fish. Not that big of a deal. Uh, maybe they want to see the beautiful scenery that I have in a video or uh, possibly they just want to see if I get eaten by the next shark I catch or whatnot. Uh, next time if I go offshore, if I'm going to sink and that's all they're interested in and then next and that's all I'm just passing and I'm not going to get really any more benefit than the one tenth of one penny from their views. But that, that demographics of that core part of it is huge. Okay, I'm going to forecast out that I'm going to turn... Uh, 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 seven figures within the next couple of years here. Um, I'm going to transition six figures here pretty quick within before the end of the year. And that's just three quarters of me opening. Um, why I could say such a positive is because I've only done uh, merchandise acquisition so far. Just getting merchandise onto the site is the only thing I've done for this first six months. I haven't had the ability to do anything else. I've done no social media. I've done no marketing. I've done no advertising. I've got opportunities to uh, open up uh, in stores here in Key West, but I just can't do it. Um, it's just until I get that replenishment uh, and handled, I just I can't grow out beyond that. So it's just a it's a problem, but a great problem, but a problem nonetheless that if you don't take care of is going to cause issues so that's kind of where we're at at the moment but anyways that's where we're at that's just kind of a little background there um hey if you've got a channel and you want to make some extra money definitely think about it uh a lot of opportunities there beyond uh one tenth of one cent <laughs> but uh anyways uh hopefully you found that interesting i'll be doing a couple more of these videos about the business side of it but more detailed about the all about the bait especially like uh, my website, how that went in effect, um, when you buy something on the site, how I process everything, how it comes in, out, and, and so forth, as well as how the um, all the stuff is stored. I don't do any drop shipping, meaning everything I sell is right here. I handle everything. I've brought everything in. Um, I bought everything. So that's probably just there. And then maybe that video on where to get all this stuff, um, how I got it, and so forth. But uh Anyways, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next video. Buy something! <laughs> Bye.